Hello and welcome to Aqua Rach. Today I'm doing a quick demonstration tutorial on dry brush technique with watercolor. And here I have a swatch, which is a dark color but painted as a light wash, a medium color painted very opaquely, and then a light color. This one's painted fairly opaquely as well. And then a dark color that is painted very dark. And I'm going to show you how you can use the dry brush technique over these swatches to create different effects, specifically textured effects. All right, so to get started, the first paradox here is that with watercolor, we have to use water in the paint in order to get it to transfer from our brush onto our paper. So what the heck is dry brush? Well, we have to use water to activate the color. And what I typically like to do is use my mixing palette just to kind of set the color aside. And then as you just saw there, I just blot my brush onto my paper towel, which I always have handy, until I'm getting the right consistency that I want. So basically we need to have enough water on the brush so that the paint actually transfers from the brush to the paper. That's called flow. But we want a texture. We don't want a smooth line. We don't want to wash. We kind of want the paint, the pigment to kind of skip around. And that means that we need a little bit of friction between the brush and the paper meaning we need to get the right amount of water onto our brush. Not too much, not too little. And it's one of those things you experiment with until it becomes a little bit more intuitive. Now for a lot of my demonstrations, I like to use dry brush techniques to add a little bit of texture. For example, if I'm illustrating some kind of animal and I want to give the impression of some fur, this is kind of how I will approach it. I'm going to start doing some dry brush that isn't terribly different from the layer of paint that I'm painting on top of, so I don't want a lot of contrast right off the bat. I kind of want to build up the texture so that it is subtle and it's not too contrasty. So here you can see as I dry brush over this light purple swatch, I am using blues and I'm gradually increasing the amount of pigment in my brush and going over previous layers. And as I do that, it allows me to build up a little bit more of a natural look. And when you watch a lot of my full tutorials, I know it's really difficult to actually see what is going on when I'm doing dry brush techniques. And so that's why I have zoomed in my camera quite a bit here. And I'm using a very small piece of paper and a small brush so that you can really see what is going on here. Because a lot of times when I start out with my first layer of dry brushing on something like fur, you, from your point of view, may not be able to actually see the marks that I am making because they are very subtle and I build them up. Dry brush allows you to have a lot more control over your strokes and I think of it more like hatching. For example, when you are drawing with either pencil or ink, you'll often use hatching lines to create shading. And you can do much the same with watercolor as long as you don't have too much water in your brush. You can make these really controlled marks and you can have the pigment kind of skip around so it's not just uniform where you apply it. And you can create some really interesting effects. And when I'm blotting off my brush into my paper towel, a lot of times I'm blotting it off so much that you would almost think that I'm wiping all the pigment off. But because I'm not rinsing my brush out, um, some of that pigment is going to stay in the bristles of my brush. And as long as there's just enough water in my brush, I will be able to transfer that pigment from my brush to my paper. And that's what I want. So you can see here on this first swatch, I was able to almost create a textured gradient from blue to kind of a light red over that purple swatch. And you can see how effective this technique is and how useful it is. 
All right, so now I'm showing you that when you have a pretty dark color, you're not gonna be able to typically hatch with a lighter color on top of it. So hatching with yellow on top of that red really didn't have any effect. But if I put a little bit of blue into that yellow and create green, you can see that I almost get like a darkening effect here. And that is because, of course, green is the complementary color to red. And so if I layer them together, I'm going to end up with a very neutral color and it's going to darken everything because these colors are interacting. They are transparent. So I'm putting a transparent green over this swatch of red. And so we're going to get that optical effect of those colors almost mixing together, even though they're not. And you can see in the areas where I went outside of the red swatch that it is green, but you wouldn't almost know that just by looking at that dry brush technique on top of the red. So if I need to achieve like a shadow, that's what I'll do. I'll find the complementary color and then I can dry brush that on top and create like a shadow and now here you can see I'm using dry brush to create some longer strokes. So these aren't the short little hatch marks that I made on the first swatch. And this can be very useful for lots of different things. Um, I typically will use this technique when I'm doing illustrations. So I kind of use this um, not really in a realistic way, but kind of in a stylized way if I want to create some contoured lines and I wanna have a lot of control and just a little bit of intermingling between these colors that are being glazed together. And glazing is something separate. This is not glazing. However, anytime you are applying a transparent color on top of another color, you're going to get that glazed effect where the two colors appear to optically intermingle. So here I'm demonstrating how I would typically address painting a branch of a tree, for example, where I want a lot of texture in here. So I've removed enough water from the brush to get this really textured look, but there's enough water in there so that I can make these long strokes. And I'm using a very light touch as I apply these strokes. And I'm letting the brush just kind of skip around. I'm not going for any kind of solid line whatsoever. And for the smaller lines that I want to make, I almost use like a flicking motion to get those. So part of this is, you know, you have a little more control with the paint when you do dry brush, but at some level you also want to have that spontaneous look. And so using a very light touch and sometimes using like a flicking motion where you're not completely controlling the line can be very useful. So now I'm working over here on this swatch of dark blue. And I first went in there with some yellow and you can actually see that yellow. It's intermingling on top of the blue in a way that it's barely perceptible. Same with this red because that blue is so dark and we're applying transparent colors on top of it. So we can start to kind of shift that color a little bit. But if you need to use a dry brush technique on top of a color that is very dark like this, you're going to want to have some white gouache available. White gouache is very opaque and it will obviously also lighten the color. And now you can see using dry brush with this gouache is allowing me to make light marks on top of the dark swatch. And there are times that you may want to use this technique. Typically with watercolor, we start painting our lightest colors and then we build our darker, more saturated colors on top. But it may just so happen that you have something that needs to have kind of a dark undertone. For example, there's some animals I can think of, like I recently painted an illustration of a skunk. And so what I wanted to do was paint the entire skunk black and then to create the white stripes, I actually used dry brush technique to create the white stripes so that they wouldn't just be solid. I wanted the effect of the white fur sitting on top of black fur. 
and I thought it had a really nice effect. So there's no hard and fast rules for how you have to do things. I think that it's just a matter of kind of experimenting and looking for the right solution. So here you can see I've added a little bit more of the red into the gouache so it's not quite as light and I got a completely different effect. And then here's one stroke that I did in dry brush and you can see how it skipped around and now I've added more water. It's a lot more solid, but as I go along, the water starts to run out and I start getting a dry brush effect. And so you might want that sometimes too. Anyway, I hope that this tutorial was useful for you. And as always, I hope that you are having a great day. Thank you.